Welcome back to Mad Gaps. So today we're going to be reviewing episodes three to five of Little Cage. If you haven't seen episodes one and two, um, the review for those, you can go back and check that out. Um, but yeah, today will be three and five, which is, there's a lot to talk about. So we'll start with episode three. Um, that is when we really get to see Cottonmouth and Little Cage. Interact really, for the first time. Yeah, for the first time, really and, know uh, who each other are. In the morgue. Episode 3 was kind of slow compared to uh, th uh, 4 and 5. It was ma basically just to set up, set up what happens in the next episodes. Right. Basically. Right. Uh, we get... Uh, so Luke Cage takes ownership of Pop's barbershop. Right. Um, he takes things into his own hands and stuff. Yeah. He decides, he finds out the only way for him to own Pop Shop is to start paying the bills. Um, thanks to that chess player guy who knows his finances, uh, we know that he needs a certain amount of money and who else to get it, who better to get it from than Cottonmouth, who should have paid up for that shop anyways. Um, the one shop that keeps the kids in the community together, pretty much, so uh, to keep the legacy of Pop going. So. Um, <laughs> And that's when he goes into Fort Knox yeah. and plans out where he's going to not get the money, but yeah. uh, sort of uh, instigate stuff. Right. And the cotton mounts, like, to get him worried about, to let him know that he's not all that powerful. Right, right. I like that he was he had a plan set in place. He wasn't just going to go and get the money, but that he was going to... He just grabbed make, he, he was going to kind of kill uh, uh, two birds with one stone. Like He's going to get the money he needed for Pop Shop, but he was also going to set Cotton Mouth up to fail, to be caught by the cops, or to at least lose his money. his money. Yeah. Um, but little does he know that um, Cotton Mouth had someone on the inside, of course, uh, one of the investigators. Um, What's his name again? Precious. Oh. Klaus or something. Yeah, I forget his name, but Misty's partner. Of course, he is... Came out of left field. I did not expect that. Usually with these kind of shows, you sort of pick up on who's going to be the right, the mm -hmm. shady person. Mm -hmm. That was out of nowhere. Yeah, it was, but at the same time, he did seem a little off. I'm like, why is this guy in the show? Yeah, the whole yeah. time I was like, but he seems so he, weird, and like he doesn't contribute much. What does he have to bring to the table? And Those are the people that always turn out have, to be bad. Right, right. I should pick up on that pattern from now on. Um, yeah, sort of. Uh, picks up on, on what Daredevil did because Daredevil like 50% of the cops were like inside men. Yeah. It's like it just continues that trend of corrupt, corrupt cops. Corrupt cops, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And when towards the end of the episode when he was talking to uh, the Latino guy, Juarez, mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. you could tell something was going to happen because it was all quiet and mellow. Oh yeah. They were just happy. Yeah. Like talking regularly and then you see uh, Juarez's face move up to the forefront. Mm -hmm. It's just there for a long time. Like, why is the camera on him for that long? Yeah. Just coming from the back. Right. It was. I thought it was funny that they were going back to the West, Wild Wild West influence because when they came into Cotton Mount's bar, um, when uh, Juarez and his crew came in, they opened the door like you do the swinging door at a like um, a Western bar oh, when you come in. That was in episode your... one or two. Was it? When Cotton Mouth came into Pop's barbershop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when he came in, it's like yeah. the music and everything. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it felt the same thing here. Maybe I didn't notice it then, but it felt like it was the same thing here. Because they were just sitting at the bar drinking, and a whole gang comes in, and I'm like, who are those strangers coming in? Like that Outlaws. whole tension. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's hints of that every now and then. And there is some of it too in episodes three and five, and four and five. But um, yeah, that was a really long setup for that analogy with the Snickers bar. I'm the alligator and you're the bird that picks up what I leave behind. The short Latino uh, uh, gang member or gang leader or yeah. mob boss, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That was a long setup. I don't know. I don't know if that scene was necessary, but I feel like there's much, something much bigger going on between those two than we realize. Yeah. Um, I thought he was just a business partner, sort of someone who just buys the weapons from Cottonmouth, but maybe he has a bigger role to play because they spent a lot of time on him in comparison to the other people Cottonmouth deals with, so, I don't know. Yeah, Detective Raphael Scarf is his name. Yeah, the detective. Mm -hmm. 
And there was a couple of fight scenes we got a taste of in this episode. We had the as hallway well. scene when he, uh, Luke Cage drops Fort Knox, and also that. Towards the end of the. Yeah, when he goes into that apartment where the girl was. Yeah. And she and Mr. Nate was like, <laughs> "What did he, what did he look like?" He was, he was he fine. Was fine. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, really?" Yeah, but the hallway fight scene was the one that was in the trailer. Um, so that was cool to see that play out finally. Um, the red right at the end. Yeah, this is this was so unforeseen. I was like, really? Was, this is. I did not see that coming. I knew Cottonmouth was going to do something, but he did, he did too much, like bringing a rocket yeah, launcher like, in a street corner, bro. No, <laughs> take down a whole building. Like, who do you think you are? I don't care if you're one of the most powerful men in in Harlem, but you don't just go and blow up a whole block without I thinking of the consequences. Type, I thought Cottonmouth was a type that like is, is very. Uh, doesn't want to cause a scene. Right. He's violent, but he doesn't want to cause a scene. He just he has sudden outburst. Yeah. But this rocket launcher thing was this just... This is a little reckless. Yeah. yeah. That was a bit too much. But then, I guess we should have seen that coming. He threw someone off a building to kill him. Yeah. His one of his guys. And didn't care if anyone was downstairs, you know, looking at the whole situation. He just... Yeah. He, he said, uh, gravity humbles a man. Mm-hmm. It's a great line. Yeah, I love that line. He has really good lines. Yeah. Especially the one where like, um, never underestimate... Uh, the N word. <laughs> I can't nigga. say. No, and us made a nigga. You never see, uh, never see them coming. And he's right. Like, because everyone has a tendency to underestimate. So, yeah. yeah, I love his little lines there. I don't know if that's from the comic or if they just added that flair to Cottonmouth in these episodes. But yeah, that was a cool episode. Setting up the next two, and now we'll talk about episodes four and five, which were pretty. Which, we were pretty quick. Very uh, different, too. Yeah. Um, episode 4 was kind of like a transitionary um, episode, because they focused a lot on... Luke Cage's origin. Yeah, his origin. Um, his life before becoming Luke Cage. Well, not really his life before becoming Luke Cage. It was just the few months he was in, in that prison before becoming Luke Cage. There's a lot more to him before that. But we don't get to see that here, because yeah. it's not relevant, I guess. And I like how Netflix... like. A regular show, like a regular network show, would have shown the prison scene, like the character's origin in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But Netflix is very unconventional, like oh, yeah. more interesting that way they show the origin in the middle of the show. Right. And they do it when Luke Cage and the Asian lady uh, that owns the restaurant were underground. Right. Like that's a really good way to do flashbacks instead of doing it in the middle mm -hmm. yeah. of like a scene or something. Right. It's very like seamless. Right. That way. I like that the focus isn't necessarily on the past. Maybe that's why they don't do the origins in the beginning. Like, they're not telling you the life story of this character. They're telling you an instance in their life and how it connects to the other heroes in this in this series. But they also want to make sure you know the past. So they're not going to start with that because that's not the most important thing. The past is the past. Um, and so episode four is him in the prison. I would have loved... I could see a whole show of Luke Cage's life in the prison. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah. Well, it seems like the prison time, his prison time was pretty short, relatively short. Like, there isn't much more to, to that than him being uh, caught in the fighting that the cops put together, and then oh, the right. therapy sessions. But I, what, what I would have really liked to know about is what was happening with the with the scientist that was uh, the doing... No, 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 not the therapist. Remember how they were saying, so the guys that leave, but they're not dead, what happens to them? Because they were oh, performing yeah. experiments on them. Other, That's, other prisoners that were experimented on. Right. Um, so everybody had this thought, like, where did they go? We never saw them die. We never saw them leave the prison so where did they go so i was like, was like whoa there's other luke cages yeah that's what i'm saying like there's a whole other uh, group of people inmates that were in there that most of which looked like they were falsely put in prison maybe for the purpose of these experiments you know what i mean so i really wanted to know more about that not so much about his prison time because it just seemed like he was pretty much roped into these fights yeah there was nothing more than that and the white prison guard, the guy with the blonde hair, mm -hmm. he cannot be more of a stereotype. Seriously. Like the racist, the... There's people like him in real life, but... Mm -hmm. Like, damn. Yeah. He's ba practically like a slave owner. That's what I was just about to say. I was like, wow, you could be in Django or any other slave Django, owner, yeah. slave owner movie and you'd fit perfectly right in. It's just the suit looks different this time. And the way that the show, with the whole underground for-profit uh, 
prison fighting uh, fight club that they have yeah. that sort of um, it symbolizes or it's like a I would say uh, like how the prison uh, like how prison systems for profit yeah. it's used as like a second slavery basically right I love how this emulates that but mm. it's not a direct translation right right I wonder so that must have been nothing from the comic then they must have just added that for this purpose no he Luke Cage just Life in prison was in the comics, but I don't think it was to this degree. Okay. Not in this kind of, from this point of view. Hmm, okay. The sort of, like, the way prison systems are now. Right. And how they're like, basically, the new Jim Crow and all that. Yeah. I really found it interesting, the prison story, where, like, just especially in his hair. Um, he rocks that hair. Can I say, he, Mike Coulter can rock an afro. Yes, he can. I wonder if that's is he bald in real life? Like, is he did he cho does he choose to be bald all the time, or does can he uh, grow hair? Is he pretty balding? Sure, or? Pretty sure he had a little bit of hair. Okay, but the fact that um, like of all the people in prison, of all his uh, inmate um, colleagues, colleagues, of all the inmates in there, he's the only one that doesn't shave. And I don't know if it's the the level of like des um, depression or how how he hates the fact that he's in there for the wrong reasons, um, that he doesn't shave at all, um, lets his hair grow out, he doesn't shower even. So it just reminded me of, I don't know why I thought of dreadlocks, <laughs> because the reason dreadlocks came about was because they were in retaliation to, um, to the higher powers wanting them to look clean and uh, look professional or whatever it may be. So it was, it was in retaliation to that that they let their hair grow out. Um, um, as a rebellion, as a revolution, and let the hair become dreadlocks. So I kind of, I thought he was going to go in that direction, but he finally kind of snapped out of it. And uh, maybe it's just a way of symbolizing of him becoming, turning into Luke Cage. Maybe, yeah. And after he shaves, he becomes Luke Cage. True. Um, and they mentioned in the episode, I'm trying to remember the quote. They said uh, one of the prison mates said, "Millionaires hidden in dungeons." Mm. That's a like Easter egg to Hammer. The guy from Iron Man 2, you guys know what I'm talking about. That's emulating, I think that's hinting at that he's in prison, in the same prison that oh. Luke Cage is in. Hammer himself? Yeah, because he went to prison. They said millionaires in dungeons. What other millionaires? Huh. In Especially in, a pr in that prison, specific yeah. prison. Maybe that's the connection that Shades has if, to Luke Cage. What if Ant Man was, went to this prison? Remember Ant Man? Yeah. I don't if you know. guys know, did Ant Man go to the same prison that Luke Cage did? So I'm wondering. Yeah, that would be a big tie. Yeah. Like that means this prison is just beyond Luke Cage. Because that might be the connection Shades has to Luke Cage. Because when he when Shades is out of prison, he works for uh, Diamondback, right? Mm -hmm. And then Diamondback is the one that supplies the guns. Yeah. So I mean, there's something much bigger going on that we're probably gonna find out later. And what do you think about the his therapist? The prison? Um, I don't know. I really don't have much to say about her. She's sort of She's, the one that helped him. Get yeah. Out. Yeah, I don't know what it was about her that that made him. I don't know. I don't know what she did for him besides help him. I don't. I really don't know what she did for him. She he, he was able to predict what she was all about. Like. She didn't have anything new to bring to the table to him. To her, though, he was something completely different. But to him, it's like it's not like something that uh, he's never seen before. Yeah. So. And the Underground Fight Club kind of reminded me of a uh, uh, Mandingo fighting from Django. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were saying that. Yeah. Like it's a bunch of white racist cops uh, like doing this. Mm -hmm. It's the same way that it was back then. Yeah. It's the same, literally the same thing. Right. Except they don't fight to death here. Um, Some of them do. Yeah, but they do bet on them yeah. this time for bits of money, but back they, then it I'm was wondering like, if the producers did that purposely, or if it's just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but except it wasn't just black men fighting in this, it was everyone that was in that prison. It was, so there was Latinos as well. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I feel so bad about... what's his name? Uh, the, the friend that he made in prison? Um, Ah, oh, I forget his name. You're looking for a friend? Keep up the squabbles. Squabbles. 
So Squabbles, <laughs> even his name sounds like, like a little mouse or like a little ferret or something, like a little friend that you make in prison. This is so weird. But he's smart. He was very intelligent. He's not just a throwaway friend, like he really helped him um, in ways he really he, he, He's needed. the one that showed him how to hold back. Sorry, exactly. How to be reluctant. That was the, the other difference. Luke Cage used to be very angry. He was Rightfully very, so. Yeah, for the for reasons that put him in prison. And I don't know if it was squabbles or what he became or if it was Riva that really taught him to kind of let that go. I think it was squabbles. I think it was squabbles. The thing about these reviews is that there's a lot to cover, if you, especially if you're doing chunks of episodes, and um, you don't miss want to miss anything. So now we also know that he used to be a cop. Yeah, no, he used to be in the military and a cop. That's huge, man. That's like, that's sort of what Punisher was. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really know that about Luke Cage. I knew he was in the military, but I didn't know he was a cop. They're, they were gonna make this a big part of his origin. Oh, okay. One of the inmates that beats him up besides Jay is the other guy. Um, he was in Being Mary Jane, which is what uh, Gabrielle Douglas was in, the show that she's in in BET. I just noticed because he was like this big football player that all the girls liked, and he's like this evil guy in here. He was such a jumpable giant in Being Mary Jane, but that's oh, we gotta mention important. when he gets experiment, he gets a tr on the cops. I know. God. That's he awesome. he when he gets out of the the box after killing um, after realizing the cop was dead yeah so when he re when he removes you know that those chains that were on him um, kind of like shackles but he doesn't completely remove them and then he doesn't remove it until he gets out of Seagate right and then he looks in the car in the mirror, mirror yeah and he puts on the yellow I know I was like really was that really like he looks good in it, it out? I know I know it's like supposed to look like stupid kind of but he looks good no no i don't think it was meant to be stupid that's the costume from the comics but it's like he happened to pick the yellow and the blue he's huge as well i didn't realize how tall and like massive he was until seeing him compared to the other prisoners he's huge and he looks like a gladiator that whole helmet structure that he's got going tiara um it's not a tiara that's what it's in the comics. They call is that it what tiara. it is? That's weird. It's an upside down tiara. It's an upside Same down. Yeah. And I love how they kind of, when he was getting out of Seagate, punching the wall. He looked like Hulk when he was punching the wall. Yeah. Dude, the extent of his powers, he was like, pff, pff, and he looks way taller than the actual like than everybody else. Look at how big he looks in that scene. If I can insert it, I will. But he looks humongous, guys. He looks like the size of Hulk. When he punches through that brick wall he becomes Luke Cage. Yeah, and he's also punching through. It's kind of like an analogy for when he's finding out about his powers, they cut to the scene of him punching through the brick that he was buried under with that Asian lady. So that's when the cops and pretty much the whole world because the camera crews were there finds out that he's a superhuman pretty much. So it's a revelation of his powers. So now that we know what his involvement with Riva is, um, I wonder if they're going to include the scenes where she um, she dies due to Jessica Jones' actions, so that's going to be the other connection that I'm looking forward to from this episode. Okay, so we're going to move on to episode 5, which I thought was kind of the big, pretty much the, everyone in the community being exposed to Luke Cage, which I think is a big deal, because now he's outed himself as a superhero. Everyone knows about him now. It's funny how I was like, how are you just throwing the bricks out while everyone oh. is looking at you and at the beginning of the episode we see the nurse and then what's his name? What's the singer's name? Claire. Yeah, we see Claire Temple, the nurse, right? You know what really made me laugh? What? So at five what is oh. she the fact that she gets robbed. Yeah I know. She, like, she just her, steps out of the train into like, Harlem streets. She goes and back into thing. her home. She's like, I'm back home. Mm -hmm. home. Home sweet home, and then she gets robbed the first instance. Seriously, but That's she was hilarious. prepared. She's like, No, this ain't happening to me today. <laughs> she ran him down. <laughs> and she beat the shit out of him. He's like, What are you doing? He was like, She's starting to kind of slow down. He's like, She's not gonna, she's coming out, she's not coming after me. And she's coming, like, What the fuck? That's messed up, man. But she was prepared. So another connection has stepped into the Luke Cage series. So this is where she goes after Daredevil season two. Yeah. And what's his name, the singer? Jediah. Jediah. 
And then we've got Jediah, I don't know how to say his name, but Jediah introducing the uh, the musical note for this uh, for this episode, um, which I really enjoyed, even though he was just rehearsing. Cotton Mouth was enjoying the shit out of that. <laughs> um, Mr. Stokes, excuse me. Um, but yeah. And shades can see. So the whole blind spiel is not really a thing. No, I think he wasn't blind. It's just the actor talked about how it's hard to act when you have glasses on. And you compare it to how Daredevil has to act. Without yeah, I get it. I get it. But he's not blind. Yeah, he, he pretends can... to be blind. He's not blind. So why does he pretend to be blind? He doesn't pretend to be blind. Yes, he does. It, I got the. Did everyone get the impression that he was blind when he first came into the the episode? That the first, the second episode, or the first episode? I thought he was blind. And then you find out he's not. I'm like, what the? Why are? Why? Are, what's the point of being blind? Pretending to be blind? I don't. I don't. I don't. Anywho, this is the episode also where we get to see um, the greats of Harlem, or like the history of Harlem a little bit, because now Cottonmouth told his, his people to go after the people of Harlem to make them think that Lu, it's Luke Cage is doing that they're being harmed. Um, I love in the scene where Cottonmouth is talking to his crew. Mm-hmm. He's like, he gets really pissed off that when they said Luke Cage, you should just back off and let Luke Cage. Yeah. That really shows that Cottonmouth cares about Harlem. He just, he, he wants to better Harlem, but in a different way. Yeah. He has a wrong idea of how to better Harlem. Right. It's sort of like the Lex Luthor, Superman thing. Right, that's true. They both want the same thing, but through different means. Right. Yeah, I just don't get how getting stuff from the community, stealing the community's money, the people of the of Harlem's money, makes up for what your anger that you can't handle your own shit. Yes. Cottonmouth can't handle his own stuff, so he's got to go steal from the community, even though he's trying to better the community. Does that even make sense to anybody? No. He's desperate. He was desperate. Desperate to what? To hold his ground by robbing yeah. the community? Because if he doesn't, then he doesn't prove himself to Jared, uh, Diamondback. Who's not even part of the community, I bet you. Is he even part of... I don't think so. No. So who are you serving exactly? I mean, he's trying to stay in the business so he can have control of Harlem. He's going at it in the wrong way, but that's what a villain does, I guess. A good villain at that. And I loved uh, when Claire Temple was talking to her uh, mom. Mm -hmm. She said, I've seen dudes that blind men that see and then men that can heal themselves from a shotgun yeah. that was Iron Fist that was Iron Fist mm-hmm. I thought she was talking about she Luke said heal himself no 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 cause she, she's meeting Luke Cage now she hasn't met him yet right she meets no, Luke she Cage met... in here no 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 she met Luke Cage in Daredevil she told Daredevil about the one time she helped she's like there's another one of you cause she had helped Luke Cage previous to Daredevil with Jessica's um, request so when she came to Daredevil, she knew about Luke Cage already. Okay, to me, it sounded like she said, a person that can heal himself, and Iron Fist is very well known. His powers is getting his chi energy yeah. into his body, and he can use that chi energy. You know the Iron Fist that he has? Yeah. That's him, his chi energy going out and making it as a force. But he can also bring it into his body and like concentrate on a wound. So. No, she wasn't. She was. She didn't say heal himself. Who can heal after a gunshot in a matter of hours? And not suffer any brain damage. Yeah, she was talking about Luke Cage because it took him like 24 hours to recover, and he was perfectly fine again. She was talking about Luke Cage. I know there's. It's really difficult. These things get mixed up because there's already three characters that we're dealing with right now, three superheroes. Um, but she was talking about Luke Cage, even though I didn't know that about Iron Fist. Um, Iron Fist. Iron Fist hasn't come into the picture yet. He's the last piece, I keep saying. I don't know how he fits in their timeline, but I think he comes later. Oh, and I love the scene when Luke Cage was talking to the girl with the green hair. Mm-hmm. She said, I plead, I plead the eighth. The, I plead the fifth. He's like, you mean the eighth? He's like, That's hilarious. yeah, whatever. <laughs> the people in this community are so realistic. Seriously, they're though. Not, they're not stereotypes. They're not all the same personality, they're all like different, Yeah. Real. Even the minority characters, like this girl walking down the street, she's not like every other girl that's in there. That's what you get when you hire a black director that Knows. sort of understands yeah. the community or something. Mm-hmm. Was the director from Harlem? Or did he know about Harlem? Yeah, he knew about Harlem. Okay. I'm not sure if he's born. Mm-hmm. And she has green hair. 
I wonder what that means. And a green jacket. Hmm. I wonder if that's just what she happened to look like or if they did that on purpose. Some Easter saying. egg. Yeah, some Easter egg. Everything is an Easter egg. Yeah, this was uh this this scene felt more western than anything. The scene when Luke Cage comes into Conmouth's domain. And, his bar. Yeah, into his bar, his domain. And pretty much beats the shit out of all his his guys and Conmouth has no choice but to go down and meet him, but he knows he can't do anything because he's gonna get his ass whooped, so Oh, and the scene where uh, Shades who was talking to Cottonmouth, showing him the video of the Russian dudes mm -hmm. with the armor, and he said the incident, he saw about the Avengers incident. Mm -hmm. That's the connection right. they made. And he said, so I think they're using Chitauri alien like stuff, mm -hmm. Diamondback, because you sort of like how Lex Luthor borrowed Kryptonian, Kryptonian armor to create yeah. weapons. Right. It's like these small mobs and gang members that are borrowing from the Chitauri mm. incident to. Mm. Makeshift weapons and stuff. Right. No, that makes that makes like sense. Illegal trade, like a black market sort of thing. Right, right. I don't think Diamondback knows half of it. Like he doesn't know any of that. He just thinks it's people against people. But now he's learning. Oh, there are these beings, and his supplier might be using. Yeah, that's what grounds, alien technology. That's what grounds these shows. They're they're using alien technology, but they're fighting them just. Regular yeah. wars. Yeah. yeah. And I like that with um, with Claire Temple, she pretty much gave us, a, when she was talking to her mom, a rundown of what happened in Jessica Jones and in, Dare, especially Daredevil, with the hospital scenes that she went through before she was fired with the zombie looking kids. She pretty much gave us a rundown so that no one is like forgetting what happened. No need to go back and rewatch the whole episodes for Daredevil, just, just listen to what Claire's telling you. Another line that I liked when Luke Cage went to the memorabilia baseball shop mm -hmm. and he said uh, the reason why baseball doesn't exist is because fathers don't teach it their sons anymore because yeah. there's no fathers anymore right. it's a really right. powerful uh, quote right it's very true yeah and then the church scene yeah Cottonmouth got whooped again gets whooped in every way by a little cage you must suck to feel like a powerless man compared to some stranger he called him a stranger coming into the community, but in the comics, Luke Cage is born and raised in Harlem. But they changed it for they the show. It for this, which George, is fine. He's from Georgia or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. It's but it's like it goes to show that even a stranger, someone who's from the community, might not do something for the community. Someone who's a complete stranger might do something better for the community. But people don't like to think that way. People want someone from their own community. They trust only the people from their own community. They keep trusting them despite the fact that they might be doing harm to them. But when a stranger comes in, they question the stranger, even though that stranger might mean, well, he might actually be trying to do something good for you. So, um, in the church scene, we see Aisha trying to to pop one out on Cottonmouth. I really didn't think she was going to do that, but he, I knew did, she was gonna do it. he did say she was a pretty feisty. Like she, when she means she's going to do something, she means it. Like, like you're not really going to do that. And I don't know how Luke Cage knew what she was about to do. I knew if she was angry, but how did he predict that she would bring a gun to kill Cottonmouth? Because the girl with the green hair said she did. She yeah, she did gun. tell him. Yeah. We're talking about Pop's funeral. If you yeah. guys are confused. Memoriam, yeah. Um, then, the two speeches. Uh, Luke Cage gives. I mean, Cottonmouth gave a speech. I don't remember what it was generally about. He was talking about outsiders. Mm -hmm. what he said. Mm -hmm. and then Luke Cage was about uh, the inverse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that kind of established sort of Lil Cage's dominance over Cottonmouth. No, this establishes the fight now. Like the war has begun now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I thought it we began... know which both sides are. Yeah, I thought it's it began right. in episode 3, but I guess yeah. it's getting deeper now in episode 5. Um, but this is also at the end of uh, the episode where Mystique goes after him and tells him to back down before it starts a bigger war. Yeah, because um, he can't get killed, but... Harlem is right, king. he's putting everyone else at risk. Um, but she's like, let the law do what they do best. Let us do it the legal way. Um, and I think this is where I feel like, well, because he tells her, I wish something different could have come out of, come between us, right? Uh, their relationship could have gone further, but they think completely differently. She's by the law. He's any other means necessary. So they're completely going their separate ways, I feel like. They're going to come back towards the end of the show, though. They're going to get back together. Oh, thanks for kind of spoiling that, like, no, why would they? No, that's obvious. Oh, how do you know that's obvious? From the comics? No, they have to. You can't just 
make them separate and then end no, the I show know. there? Well, they're not going to end the show there. I'm saying they're going to go their separate ways. He might be doing his own thing. They might be telling us stories from Luke Cage's side of other things, and then Misty's not going to be there for a while. And she might come back, but I don't think they're going to get back together. I doubt it. Anyway, but I think they were perfect for each other. They just played off of each other very well, so that would be nice to see. So yeah, I, we tried to keep it short this time, you guys. Um, I know there's a lot more we can go into, but there's not enough time. So if we missed anything or if you want to add anything, comment down below. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.